OK, we started uh, the recording right now of uh, our lecture. OK, so let me try to. Flip here my the laptop in the and have it in the. OK, so. Um, here we have in the presentation mode. OK, so what we are doing here, we're going to uh, start on the um, uh, clustering using an al algorithm called k-means. All right, so um, let's see if I have the, uh, okay, that's fine. Okay, we'll uh, get a pen here. The pen. Okay. Now, um, let's talk about define what a clustering means. Uh, clustering uh, in is really what we mean by is the natural grouping of. Uh, let's see, natural grouping of. Uh, a natural grouping of objects based on grouping criteria. So take a look at the key words here. Grouping of object and based on grouping criterion. Yes, yes. So we have we have specific features that that uh, we we group these. So that's that's basically cross in very simple terms without without complicating uh, the, 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 the the algorithm now <clears throat> um, so now what happened is that um, um, in in clustering analysis uh, in general it is uh, it is unsupervised machine learning and that's why we have it after the PCA so recall in the last lecture we looked at the principal component analysis it is unsupervised learning method and clustering is also unsupervised learning method and it employs a cluster uh, to, uh, uh, the, the, it employs a cluster algorithm to discover clusters okay so uh, you group data based on criteria right and that grouping really needs discovery you have to discover that grouping Right. What, what? How? How do you? How do you put these with the, the, the these group of data uh, together versus the other group of data together? You have to discover the similarities. You have to discover these 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 relationship between uh, those elements uh, 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 that that you are trying to cluster. So, um, in 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 an essence, uh, a clustering algorithm. What it does is, <clears throat> given a set of features, right? Uh, X1, X2, da da da, ila khiri, etc. Group the vectors into K clusters. Okay, you start with uh, st uh, an input data. This could be um, uh, this, this this could be a list of um, uh, let's say for example, uh, like uh, last semester where I gave list of animals, right? With 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 certain criteria, and I said cluster them. And uh, uh, we we give you uh, a, a, you cluster them in K groups, three groups, four groups, five groups, two groups. Okay, uh, the algorithm is not provided with any labels. Of course, uh, we don't label the data for you. That's that's the uh, uh, yes. We give you that that the name of this animal is tiger, but uh, you have to 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 put this animal into a group and label it. Maybe. Um, the 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 animals that 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 kill people. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So so you have to, to put it in a group and give it a label. So the algorithm computes uh, uh, in, in in these cases. The algorithm computes uh, k centroids. All right. These uh, we'll talk about what centroids. That is almost like the middle points in the cluster, and we designate uh, a label of ci to each point. Okay, which means this point belongs to this centroid, as we will see in the algorithm very shortly. Okay, the the famous algorithm k means right. Let me see if I can get a pen here. Okay, so so the the, the most famous of all these al algorithms is the k means. 
and the k-means algorithm the simplest very powerful okay and uh, uh if you if you use it uh with with certain uh, preparatory step uh, steps I'm, I'm sorry um you you get amazing results uh last semester <clears throat> my students uh, when i gave them the assignments they used pca prior to um uh, k-means and they got wonderful results okay so uh, just a hint we might we might have a homework similar to 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 to, to this uh, okay so k-means algorithm uh, it is a clustering algorithm obviously all right uh, it designates uh, k centroids so it starts with k centroids right uh, if you if you if you will okay if you can think of the centroids like a planet and the data like the moons around this planet right so it pulls this data around it okay um a point a point is considered to be a particular uh, cluster if it is uh, closer to that cluster centroid more than any centroid so for instance i have uh two i have here uh one cent one centroid all right and another centroid and then there is this data point of course it will be with this centroid because it is closer to this centroid than the other centroid. So centroids supposed to pull the data, right? You, you, you gravitate towards the closer of the centroids. Now, what are the challenges for this algorithms? Obviously, it's not a perfect algorithm. One problem of the k-means algorithm is that you have to give me k. In other words, if you, if you cluster the data into two clusters, you have to tell me, cluster them into two clusters. Top three clusters, you have to tell the algorithms, what is K? K here, number of clusters. But I don't know, discover them, the algorithm doesn't provide it. So, so uh, it, it, ideally, what I want is, is to cluster the data to the optimum way of clustering them, right? But the k-means doesn't give you that. The k-means, you have to tell it number of clusters. And we will see how we, you know, try to fix this with the uh, elbow uh, graph and, 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 and try to, 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 uh, to, to kind of work around this problem. Okay? So k-means, if you look at it, you have to provide it the data, right? And you have to provide it with k. And then it produces for you K clusters of data, okay, right? You have, you have, it produces those K clusters, but it does not discover the optimum K. All right, so uh, here uh, in this figure, we start uh, with, 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 with six points of data. You can see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Uh, we have six points. Uh, they are not assigned to any cluster to start with. Exactly. Uh, when I give you an assignment or, or you are in, in, in practice, you get a data. It's not clusters. You have a bunch of numbers coming at you. OK, you are, you are not cl clustering them. Now, uh, when we apply k-means algorithm, we, we applied this k-means here. This is the algorithm. We applied it here. And what we found out is this clustering. So we told it Q's K equals two, meaning I want you to apply the K-means algorithm and produce for me two clusters. Clearly, the algorithm discovered that these three points belong to a cluster, and these three points belong to a cluster, right? It will be very bizarre if we do it in any other way. Like, for example, if you, if you look at here, Let's say, um, let's say for example, let's say for example, if the algorithm comes in here and says, well, I'm gonna cluster these like so. Ah, uh, that's very bizarre clustering, right? Then you're just picking up points from here and there and just, you know, shoving them into clusters. That is not optimal. So k-means doesn't do that, right? K-means provide for you the optimum clustering, uh, given that you are telling at uh, the number of clusters. All right. Okay. So, so here, let's uh, let's uh, let's take that now. And uh, uh, so, so these are now the k-means algorithm. 
a cluster that the point into two clusters, which is here. Let, let's see, see, this is cluster one and this is cluster two. And uh, C J C I equal J. Let, let's let's understand what this notation means. C I equals J. OK, um, uh, this indicates uh, C, uh, C I equal J means what? See, these numbers, uh, these points are numbered from, let's say, let's say, for example, X one. Uh, this is X2, this is X3, for example, X4, X5, X6, right? We number these points. And when we say, when, when, uh, and, and, and this is now, uh, 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 we, we ended up clustering these into cluster number one, and we ended up clustering these into cluster number two. Now, how do I say that number, uh, this point, which is number five, belongs to cluster one? This is the notation. The point five belongs to cluster one. OK, so C five meets X five equal one belongs to cluster number one. So that's that's what what is this notation means. All right. Now here in the after the clustering, notice that these mu's mu one and mu two, right? These are what? These are the centroids and they are computed along the algorithm. Now, the, uh, in the output of the algorithm, whether you use them or, that, uh, or not, and typically you don't care, right, about the centroids, but the algorithm can uh, 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 compute these centroids because it's part of its computation, okay? Uh, th these are the planets, and think of the data like the moons that uh, rotate around these planets. So, so this is how it uh, it, it, it it computes the 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 the, uh, the the clusters. So, this is the algorithm. Um, it is really very simple. I'm going to explain it graphically and then go back to the uh, to the steps of the algorithm. Very simple. The k-means, by the way, one of the simplest algorithms, but but very powerful. Okay. Now, so we start with uh, with the data. This is my original data. Right? What do I do? Well, you told me you need k equal two, meaning you need two clusters. I will assume randomly that, uh, 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 okay, well, I need to have two centroids, and I'm going to assume their location randomly. Pick any two random location and assume they, they are the planets. They are the centroids. And then what? And then we compute the distance between uh, uh, the, the, uh, this point. Every point will compute the distance to the centroid. So let's say this, this point here uh, is S, for example. So I will compute the distance to centroid 1, right, which is, which is this one here. And I will compute the distance to centroid 2. I will assign then the point S to the cluster of the centroid the closest. So here I find out that this distance here is shorter than I say this point S1 belongs to cluster 1, since this is a mu1. It doesn't belong to cluster 2 you know, because the distance is larger. I, and I go over this exercise all over the points. So I do this point, I do this point, I do this point, this point, this point. Every point, you measure the distance to the, all the centroids, then you assign the point to the cluster with the centroid closest to the point. Then what? Then we recompute the centroids. Watch the centroids we're here, up and down, here and here. We compute, how do I compute them? So the way you compute the center is you take these points. Let's, uh, let me do an erase here. All right, um, let's see. And then um, we say that um, I'm gonna recompute. So I take the average of this point, this point, this point, and I produce a new centroid for it. And then I, I create the average, and how do you create? Well, you sum up the X coordinate and you create an average x coordinate. You sum up the y coordinates of the points in the cluster, and you pr you produce the average uh, y coordinate, and this becomes the new coordinate for the centroids. So now, once I do that, notice that the the centroids have shifted. Okay, they have shifted somewhat. And now, what what do I do? I do I reassign the points one more time. By the way, it might not a computation dakika. But I just was there to illustrate the concept. Yani, 
<laughs> yeah, j j these, these graphs might might have missed uh, some computations. But anyway, then 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 what? I recomputed the these centroids. Then what do I do? Do assignments again. Go to all these points, right? One by one, measure the distances to the centroid, and then assign the point to the cluster where this point closest to its centroid. Repeat the process, basically. Okay, so we find that this one has to belong here. This has to belong here. This has to belong here. This has, 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 right? And I have, there's a slight change, probably, right, on, in, in distributing the points. Then what? Then recompute the, the centroids again. And so, 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 so this is a repetitive process. When do we stop? That's the process. Assign points to clusters. Recompute centroids for clusters. Assign points to clusters. Recompute this. So when do I stop? When there is no change. When there is no change in points, you stop the algorithm. You, you know that you have reached a point where uh, neither the centroids are changing nor the assignment is changing, خلاص, you have reached your final solution. Stop now. But how many times? As long as it takes. Okay, so there is no uh, 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 loop for that. Okay, once once you reach this criteria, you stop. Okay. So now let's take a look at the algorithm in, in, in Word, right? Notice that this is uh, this algorithm, identify number of clusters, identify K centroids, the initial identification is random, right? Uh, uh, in other words, these centroids are random initially, and then uh, identify k centroids of one for each cluster, determine the distances uh, to, to each point, and then group clusters based on minimum distance, meaning those points closest to a centroid, make them in one cluster. Go to other points closest to a centroid, make them in another cluster. How many cluster? Well, k should tell you. I don't invent number of clusters. If k is five, then you have to produce you start your algorithm with five centroids. If K is two, you start your algorithm with two centroids. Okay, so uh, the number of clusters, it is an input to the algorithm. All right. Okay, until you, some math here. Uh, one thing you should know here in this math is that we compute the distances. But you, you should you should know from your math how to compute the distances between x and y coordinates, right? So this these are the distances, uh, uh, and and we use them to 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 measure the distances between a a point to all the centroids, and then we assign the point to the cluster of the closest centroid. Okay, so no, you should know how to use them. Now, one thing also important is that we are assuming here numerical values. So you are assuming here numerical values. There's a good discussion about non-numerical values. Khalina, wait for a second here until we get to the example at the end, and then we, 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 we say a few words about it, okay? Type. Uh, what else here? Okay, so convergence, we said uh, you converge until no longer there is a change. So in, in the computation of the centroids or in the assignments of the points. Once you, you, you reach a point, of, nothing is changing, you stop your algorithm. Okay, so optimum K, we'll see. How do I determine the optimum K? Well, uh, here, here, is, here is how we determine the optimum K. I'm gonna fast forward here and look at the what we know as the elbow graph. Elbow graph, what is this elbow graph? Okay, now what, what happened if I want to determine the optimum K, um, I have to, to now manually Run the algorithm, okay, manual with a script, uh, but, 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 but the algorithm does not provide this. So, so you have now to try different values of Ks. So you take your data, right? And what? And cluster it with K equal to. Run your algorithm. Then cluster it with K over three. Run your algorithm. K equal five, T equal six, up to K equal 10, for example. Okay, so we ran these algorithms nine times, eight times of clustering algorithm. Then what? So see, the question here is, what's the criteria or criteria that tells you that this clustering 
is better than this clustering. Bimana, if I run the algorithm with k equals three, it means I created three clusters. And I run the algorithm with k equal five and I created five clusters. How do I know three clusters is better than five clusters? How do I know? One measure is the elbow graph, which basically uh, for every cluster you have to compute. <clears throat> For every clustering, you have to compute a cost function. You create a cluster, compute the cost, and the cost function is the sum square distances between between the sum square distances between each point and the centroid. Bimana, I have I have created here. Uh, so so here is here is the, the 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 data right, and I created these three points in this in this cluster, and the centroid is here. This is my centroid. So I. Take this distance, square it, take this distance, square it, take this distance and square it. Sum all these square distances. Go to another cluster here. Let's suppose you have you have two clusters. Let's say if you have two points here, right? And this is this is your uh, whatever uh, the, the centroid. Take this distance, square it, take this distance, square it, and you cr and, and add all of that to create your cost function. It is within cluster sum of squares. So this this measures what? This measures gradational points in Bahtarin in the cluster. Because if the points are closer to the to the to the to the centroid, you will have this cost function to be less. If the if the if the points in a cluster in Bahtarin, then you will have these square distances large which means you might not have really a great clustering algorithm. But one second, one second. I know that the more clusters I create, the closer the centroids to the data it will be. Because more clusters means more centroids. And more centroids, it means the centroids will be closer to the points. Of course, this cost function will favor higher number of clusters. In fact, I can tell you the worst case. The worst case, if you have all the data in one cluster and you have one centroid, so that centroid will be far from everybody and you will have a high cost function. So why do I use this cost function? So uh, the cost function the minimum. The cost function will we use it? We will we will we will plot a plot. We call it elbow plot, where we plot the cost function here and here L K. Right, and there comes a point as you increase the cluster. Yeah, you you you're gonna go down as you increase number of clusters, but there comes a point they call the elbow point. Right, so so here is the curve going down. And there's this elbow point where it's, I can tell it's around here. What does the elbow point mean? It means after that, the, 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 the line declines without great benefit. When I went from one cluster to two cluster, two cluster to three cluster, I'm gaining a lot of cost reduction for that cost function. But now look at this region here, almost saturated. Right, no much benefit. So you can tell that here in this case that uh, my clustering al algorithm favor a cluster of three, I believe, right? And and this this is pr this is uh, the 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 elbow point. Okay, so I can see here. Uh, probably I can. Uh, no, let me see here. So this is probably uh, around here. The two or three uh, is the elbow point. By the way. Graph is not accurate. You can see the points are not aligned. You are, you're going to look at this really transition here between saturation of the cost function as it as it declines and then a sharp drop. This is your optimum point. So we're looking for that cluster that gives me that transition, which is in this case, as I have indicated in this area. We will have examples, uh, numerical examples for that. Uh, just just bear for me a second. OK, so this is how I determine what now? The optimum, the optimum what? 
number of clusters because the K means doesn't give it to you. All right. Let's take an example here of data, an example of data. Um, uh, uh, so, so we have here a list of animals and we are listing features here. Um, weight, speed, and whether the animal is a carnivore or uh, omnivore. OK, watch this column carefully. Leh, what's the problem of this column? In this example, we don't deal with it. But in your assignments, you, you might, if I decide to give you a k-means algorithm assignment, because this is non-numerical value. يعني الحيوان بوكل لحم والعشب. How do you? Uh, okay, speed I know, weight I know, it's a number. But how do you? How do you can? Because our algorithm notice that it co it 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 measures what? It measures distances between points. So obviously. <coughs> If I'm taking these these three points data, then you have three features, right? Uh, if you can think of them coded X, Y, Z. So the Z represents what? What's in Z? What is a carnivore? Zero, one, minus one, a hundred, two hundred. So so you will see that uh, uh, we will comment about that for a second. But let's just use these two features right now. We're going to classify these animals based on weight and speed. So we take these two features and we we'll plot these animals. Notice here you, uh, on top you have cheetah, right? One of the fastest animals uh, on, on, on uh, you know, if you, if you, if you, if you take out, uh, I believe, I believe the fastest is a bird, um, forgot what it is, uh, but, uh, and probably uh, there, there will be a, a, a yani, um, uh, anyway, so 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 the che the cheetah here is the fastest. If you look at the speed axis, right? If you look at the weight, we got the black bear. The black bear is uh, the in this list is the heaviest in terms of weight. And obviously, we did not include the grizzly bear, which is heavier than the black bear. Uh, neither the polar bear. When the polar bear is heavier than the black bear and the grizzly bear. OK, and there's these typically these animals, they live in in, in the west co coast of um, of of the American continent. Uh, you start from California all the way up to to to, to Alaska and the and the polar regions type. OK, so this is the data now. What do I do with it? Well, we need to cluster it based on speed and uh, so we run the clustering algorithm. OK, right. Uh, let's see. We said let's let's cluster these guys in three clusters based on two criteria: weight and speed. What well, turns out to be a funny cluster here? Watch this cluster here. We uh, we clustered fox, rabbit, cat in one cluster, and then we clustered cheetah, panther, wolf, dog in one cluster, and then the lion and the tiger and the black bear. Well, that makes sense to me. Right in, in in this cluster, right? Okay, they, they, we don't like this cluster. Uh, let's try what let's try what let's try multiple ones. Uh, two clusters and three clusters. Well, three we did it already, and four clusters. Watch what's what's interesting here, and I, I, and the reason I did this. Uh, well, first of all, this is real fun, but more importantly than fun, it shows you how this algorithms work. How this algorithm work? Watch. When we when we uh, uh, went from uh, 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 three clusters to cl two clusters, and from three clusters to four clusters, from three clusters, right to four clusters, the algorithm figured out that you know these guys are close to each other. Lump them, them fi cluster wahadi. Right? Why? Well, you told the algorithm. Use two clusters. Now watch when 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 we went from k equals three to four clusters, you can tell that the algorithm was struggling with the cheetah. A cheetah hai majbali. Immediately, what the what the algorithm did? It knocked it out in a cluster by itself. غلبت كثير في ال في ال k equal three وال k equal في ال k equal the first thing the algorithm did 
it just removed the cheetah and put it in because the cheetah is is a is a lightweight animal and fast and baqit al animals yeah uh, uh, lightweight and slow or or heavyweight and but but the light but the cheetah you can see this is standing out there so when we move to four clusters the very first thing the algorithm did it took out the cheetah outside so you can see how these these algorithms really are smart into really trying to group animals based on the similarities of the feature that we asked to do okay so let's let's compute the cost function and go for the elbow graph if we go for the elbow graph we can see that you know really uh if we use one cluster that cost function will be high because we have one centroid and 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 the, really one cluster is a trivial solution do one cluster yani Cluster this cl uh, students uh, for me. Well, all of them are one cluster. Uh, and, and, and the other extreme put every student in one cluster. Both are trivial solutions. We'll never use them. Now, typically you look at, you know, 10 to 10, uh, 2 to 10 clusters. This is, you know, typically for, for, for things to be meaningful. All right. And you can see that uh, by just going to, to, to two clusters, look at the drop in the cost function. And for three, Right. So you can see here, I can see that we start to saturate here. I can I can make the argument and you you, you might want to disagree that the, the elbow point is at three. OK, and after three clusters, we really lose interest in what happens. Then the cost functions kind of really saturates. OK. Now, uh, one th one thing I wanted to comment about is, is the following point. Now. Oh, let's go back here. Ah, yeah. So the question here about non-numerical data. How do if I if I want to repeat the same exercise, and I ask you to cluster these animals using the three criteria, using weight, speed, and diet. Well, weight, speed, they are numerical values. And how about diet? Let me take the answer. Nam? You can do what for the data? Classify the data? We don't have labels. We don't have labels. Okay, so so one one idea here is um, one idea here is well, obviously we have to convert into numerical values. Okay, we, we we cannot use labeling because what we are doing we're trying to label the data, so we we're do, we we don't want to do the work of the algorithm. So the idea here is that how can I yes, you want to add something. Okay, all right. So, uh, all what you suggested uh, 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 right now, it, 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 it the, there are different approaches. Okay, and seriously, there is no unique solution. One solution, which is not the only solution, and obviously you can see there are different suggestions here. One solution is to take that diet column and split it into two columns. One column, diet underscore, for example, diet underscore carnivore, diet underscore omnivore. Do we have a third? Oh, there's a herbivore. Okay, so three columns. Okay. So under these three columns, let's say, for example, uh, we have let me let me let me go back to my presentation here. 
Um, so, so this column will be split. This is one solution, by the way, not the only solutions. This will be split into three columns. Let's call it uh, carnivore, carnivore, and uh, omnivore, and uh, herbivore. Right? That's an edge here. Then what? Then the animal. I take them animal by animal. The animal which which does the carnivore here in the, these three columns, I assign this as a one, and this is zero and zero, right? Etc. And then then let's say if we, if we if we look at the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the rabbit here for example, okay, um, it is uh, one zero zero to clash up. Now what have I done here? I converted non-numerical feature to numerical feature. This approach is called one hot. And for those of you who are taking data science, you might see your professor talking about this approach. Very valid, excellent, right? However, what's the problem here? You spot, oh yeah, so, so you increase number of features, right? You increase number of features. And notice that uh, when, when we were doing PCA, right? Right? When I was doing PCA, these are my samples, these are my features. PCA features. And I got What am I doing? I'm increasing the features, right? So, so that's. A solution uh, with the downside of it. Another solution is to suggest some kind of a value, numerical value, but it has to be well studied numerical value. Shman, a well studied numerical value. Munkini um, Juahri Gul, okay, and I suggest, you know, um, El, 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 el carnivore one, herbivore minus one, will omnivore zero. Methylene. Publish. Based on what? Notice that with this approach, if I take these labels, I'll take these features, numerical values, I will keep one feature, not split one feature to three. Yes. After finding all, yes. The reason I want to remove, the reason that I want to remove this, the words, and make them numbers, because I did a clustering. So you want you want to classify them first. Last. Okay, so 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 we cluster them based on these two features first. Into bit and then cluster them. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure if this helps really the performance of the algorithm. I don't know. My answer to this is I don't know. Uh, let me tell you where this is important. Where this is important, last semester, which I might repeat, I gave my students a list of animals, right? Um, larger than this list and more features than this list. We included uh, the habitat, where these live. They live in desert, they live in jungle, they live in, the, in, 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 in water, they live, I don't know. And then, so 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 they, we give more features that uh, that that have words in them, and I asked the students, the students, to design a uh, zoo. I think there were like thirty or fifty animals. So I said, Anna, I'm building a zoo. 
and I came to you as a data scientist or as a computer engineer or somebody who studied AI, and I said, I want you to cluster those animals in a way that I can make a plan for my zoo, but it has to be meaningful plan, right? So you need to cluster these animals because we we need to keep uh, these animals. Taban, if you if you if you are aware of this uh, open air zoo. طبعا هذه المودرن زوز ما بحطوش الحيوانات في كيجز لانها اتس اتس ان هيومين سو وات يو دو يو هاف ان اوبن سبيس رايت وبتحط الحيوانات اللي بتتعايش مع بعض واللي خواصها قريبه مع بعض ممكن تحط مثلا 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 الزرافه مع مش عارف البافلو اوكي نيكست تو a pond right so so it's an open air zoo where you can you can have two to three four five species jump up and i said you know you have to classify for me this this zoo i got really interesting solutions and i got fantastic uh, uh, zoos طبعا في الاخير you have to draw a zoo for me based on the cluster طلعت عندك الكلاستر اللاين مع الرابت you put them above right Okay, so if you were not careful into engineering, because this is now feature engineering, right? Feature engineering. Uh, you, you got these funny clusters for me, okay? So an open question, uh, and, and, and typically open questions are good for engineers to work on, okay? What would be a good way to convert non-numerical value to numerical value so that my algorithm can can work on it i got uh, let me let me sh show you uh, give you some of some of the things that i saw yani, uh, uh, for example you get uh, when we, when we have these numerical values when you take a feature and you place a numerical value some students were not careful of replacing the numerical value yani, they would come and and and, uh, and give a uh, a uh, Uh, herbivore minus 1000 uh will will carnivore 1000 طبعا of course you split now هلا data of course you will split it because you are giving really huge numbers هلا and you are forcing the algorithm انه يفكر زيك او حتحط الاشياء اللي بتاكل ايش بحالها والاشياء لانه you are forcing this algorithm by giving large values معين انت معي Yeah, and you are giving really, really large values, influencing the algorithm. What will be better, el no ish, no nishtal a standard deviation. Damn standard deviation. Takaror, when we started PCA, we went into standardization step, which is take out the mean, divide by the standard deviation. What does that do to your data? Up, خليها smooth. الأرقام الكبيرة هذه relatively بتصغر. عشان تعرف تعرف تعجن هاي الداتا كويس right? في عندي كولم على مثلا مثلا على الاوزان ببلش من 1 كيلو للفيل 1000 كيلو هاي ارقام كثير بتخرب علي الالجوريثم مع الفيتشرز الثانيه الفيتشر الثاني مثلا عندك فيتشر مثلا they scale من من واحد الى ثلاث but once you take the data and you you and, and you and you do standardization عليها then now now the data is now Uh, uh, varies based on how how far they are away from the mean, right? From the mean, you deal with a z-score. So these kind of a little bit data, and how you kind of massage the data. طبعا في طلاب بعد ما سووا هيك شو سووا راحوا على PCA, right? سووا PCA reduced the features وطلع لهم two to three PCA components. و really they هذول الناس اللي اشتغلوا صح للامان يعني uh, uh, standardization uh, uh, PCA طلع لهم 2 to 3 features it makes it very easy for them to run the algorithm حتى الالجوريثم لما اختاروا ال PCA equals 2 they plotted the animal in two directions x and y mean PC1 PC2 right and it was very clear the classification the clustering even before they run the algorithm so Um, playing with the data, right, and extracting information 
it is one of uh, it's a very hot area, right? It is uh, um, uh, it is really um, something that بدها خبرة, okay? طبعا ما بتصير هاي بيوم في يومين وثلاث وأربعة. الناس اللي 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 منكو يعني very interested in this stuff try to really understand uh, uh, and take courses in big data analysis. Okay. على فكرة في عنا دول شقيقة حوالينا حاطين كل الداتا عندهم أونلاين مثل السعودية وقطر. Uh, all their data are online. You can access it. The population, the electricity usage. You can you can download this data for, for you. And because because uh, uh, this is جزء من التحول الرقمي اللي يعني some some of the neighboring countries are really doing very 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 well. Right? Uh, or they are getting the the ranking to the UN التحول الرقمي. I think there is something like that. They are getting high scores. خاصة السعودية. They are way ahead of everybody. Way ahead of everybody. So so they can you can use their 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 data, download it, and play with the data. If this is something you like to 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 specialize with, along with the. Uh, uh, data science courses. Um, I need to stop right now. Thank you very much. If you need more questions, please follow me uh, to my office because I need to um, evacuate uh, the, the room as soon as I can here. Okay, discard. So we'll go to the to 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 the uh, this meeting and stop the recording.